Hi guys, I'm Adina, and this week I'm going to be doing the wacky science video for the Wells Branch Library. So today we're going to be making bath bombs. So bath bombs actually, how they work is that they utilize a acid base, uh, acid base reaction where my acid is citric acid, you can find this in the store, and my base is baking soda, also known as sodium bicarbonate. So how bath bombs work is when I put them uh, in water, my citric acid and my baking soda react together and they form water, a salt, and carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide is what gives you that fizzing and bubbling because carbon dioxide is a gas. So we're gonna be using, for citric acid, we're gonna have one half cup about this. We're gonna get three fourths cup of baking soda. And obviously you can uh, modify this recipe too in much smaller portions. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get cornstarch. So our cornstarch is not responsible for the fizzing or like um, the actual color or anything in the reaction. What it does is it can make the reaction last longer because it binds to your acid and your base, which makes it harder for them to react. As a result, the fizzing will last a lot longer. So actually you don't really need cornstarch. But if you want to, you can add just a bit. Like you can add about one fourth of a cup. It's up to you, to be honest. I'm just gonna add maybe about one eighth. We'll see how that goes. But it's definitely not needed, okay? So we're gonna put all this other stuff to the side. And what you can do now is you can also add um, extra stuff like Epsom salt if you want. But we're gonna stir this all together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my wet ingredients now. So there's multiple things that you can have for your wet ingredients that include some, um, you definitely have to have water. You can have food coloring if you want. It's best to have food coloring because that's what's gonna give your bath bombs the color when they fizz. And it's all up to you what you want. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get about two teaspoons of this. gonna pour it in here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this food coloring can be any color I'm going to use actually let me see I haven't tried green before so let's try green what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this and I'm going to do about two to three drops and then I'm gonna stir this all together so I'm gonna carefully clean off this make sure none of this touches we don't want any of it to react really, and I'm going to stir this all together. All right, this next part is very important. You have to be very careful. What we're going to do is we're going to slowly add our water mixture to here. Now we want to do this in very small amounts because it will react. You may notice that it fizzes. So we see here that mine is fully mixed. It's all green now. So this is good. Now, how you can test if you have enough water is I'm going to put it together and I should see that it begins to be moldable. Like I can put it in shapes. So in this case, I can put it into this little ball. So this is perfect. It clumps together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my tray. It can be, you can even use an egg card and you can use anything that will keep it have um, a shape. Like I've used muffin trays in the past and those work as well. So just anything that will keep your shape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in here. I just chose these because I like the design that they have. And I'm going to completely fill it and pat it down. Okay, and here we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wait here since these are all filled. Let me make sure I get this one too. Since these are all filled, they're gonna be now left for about an hour to maybe three hours max. It shouldn't take that long unless you have a very uh, detailed design that you want, then that may take like a day or so. But if it's something small like this, it shouldn't take too long. So just wait for that to dry and then we can test it out and see how that goes. 